In ancient times, Greece was not a united country. It was a collection of separate lands where Greek people lived, Greek speaking people lived. By 3000 BCE, the Minoans lived on the large Greek island of Crete. And the Minoans created an elegant civilization that had great power in the Mediterranean world. But at the same time, peoples from the plains along the Black Sea and Asia Minor or Anatolia were migrating and settling in the mainland of Greece. Today we're going to talk about Greece and the beginnings of what we call the Greek civilization. We will meet the Persians later in the week and their civilization is even more vast and I would argue far more impressive. But we're going to cover both and your notebook should reflect Greece and Persia and today we're going to look at how geography plays a role in the development of a culture. So culture of the mountain and the seas. Here's a reminder as to where we've been. Indo-European group that we've been looking at from the beginning, um, we, in the last unit, had looked at their movement into Asia Minor, and we studied the Hittites. We moved down into the Indian subcontinent and looked at this Aryan group of Indo-Europeans that settled into this area. We looked at Indo-Europeans that settled into this area along the eastern edge of the Mediterranean, the Phoenicians. Phoenicians had come into contact with the Egyptians, and we had talked about Ur, so this whole area was last unit. This unit, we are going to talk about the Persians, Medes, again, all part of this Indo-European family, and the Greeks that settle in this mainland area. Ancient Greece consisted mostly and mainly of a mountainous peninsula that jutted out into the Mediterranean Sea. It also included about 2,000 islands in the Aegean and the Ionian Seas. Lands on the eastern edge of the Aegean were also part of ancient Greece. The region's physical geography directly shaped Greek traditions and culture. The sea shaped Greek civilization just as rivers shaped the ancient civilizations of Egypt, the Fertile Crescent, India, and China. In one sense, the Greeks did not live on a land but around a sea. Greeks rarely had to travel more than 85 miles to reach the coastline. The Aegean Sea, the Ionian Sea, and the neighboring Black Sea were really important transportation routes for the Greek people. These seaways linked most parts of Greece. As the Greeks became skilled sailors, sea travel connected Greece with other societies. Sea travel and trade were also important because Greece lacked natural resources such as timber and precious metals and usable farmland. This map up here should look a lot and remind you a lot of the Phoenician trade routes that we looked at in the last unit and how Phoenicia here, Byblos, Sidon, and Tyre had trade routes that reflected a lot of these similar places. Remember Carthage was right here and we talked about the Phoenicians traveling all the way to the outside edges of the African continent and all the way up north to the British Isles. The land itself was really rugged. This map down here gives you a sense of how rugged this Peloponnesus or this Greek peninsula was. Rugged mountains covered about three fourths of ancient Greece. The mountain chains ran mainly from northwest to southeast along the Balkan Peninsula. Mountains divided the land into a number of different regions. This significantly influenced Greek political life. Instead of a single government, the Greeks developed small, independent communities within each little valley and its surrounding mountains. Most Greeks gave their loyalty to just these local communities. In ancient times, the uneven terrain also made land transportation super difficult. Of the few roads that existed, most were of little more, little more than dirt paths. It often took travelers several days to complete a journey that might only take a few hours today. Much of the land itself was stony and only a small part of it was actually arable or suitable for farming. Tiny but fertile valleys covered about one-fourth of Greece. 
but the small streams that watered these valleys were not suitable for large scale irrigation projects. With so little fertile farmland or fresh water for irrigation, Greece was really never able to support a very large population. Historians estimate that no more than a few million people lived in ancient Greece at any given time. And even this small population could not expect the land to support a life of luxury, a desire for more living space, grassland for raising livestock, and adequate farmland may have been factors that motivated the Greeks to seek new sites for its colonies. Climate was the third important environmental influence on Greek civilization. Greece had a varied climate with temperatures averaging about 48 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter and about 80 degrees in the summer. And in ancient times, these moderate temperatures supported an outdoor life for many. Greek citizens. Men spent much of their leisure time at outdoor public events. They often met to discuss public issues, to exchange news, and to take active part in civic life. As chapter three explained, well, as our last unit explained, a large wave of Indo-Europeans migrated from the Eurasian steppes to Europe India and Southwest Asia. And some of these people who settled on the Greek mainland around 2000 BCE were later known as Mycenaeans. The name came from their leading city, Mycenae. And Mycenae was located in Southern Greece on a steep rocky ridge and surrounded, it was surrounded by a protective wall of more than 20 feet thick. The fortified city of Mycenae could withstand almost any attack, and from Mycenae, a warrior king ruled the surrounding villages and farms. Strong rulers controlled the areas around the other Mycenaean cities, such as Tyrans and Athens. These kings dominated Greece for about 500 years, from about 1600 BCE to about 1100 BCE. Sometime after 1500 BC, E, through either trade or war, the Mycenaeans came into contact with the Minoans. From their contact with the Minoans, the Mycenaeans saw the value of seaborne trade. Mycenaean traders soon sailed throughout the eastern Mediterranean, making stops at the Aegean Islands, coastal towns in Anatolia, the ports in Syria and Egypt and Italy and Crete. The Minoans also influenced the Mycenaeans in lots of other ways. They adapted the Minoan writing system to the Greek language and decorated vases with Minoan designs. And the Minoan influenced culture of Mycenae formed the core of Greek religious practice, of their art, of their politics and literature. Indeed, Western civilization has its roots in these two early Mediterranean civilizations. During 1200 BCE, the Mycenaeans fought a 10-year war against Troy, an independent trading city-state located in Anatolia or Asia Minor. According to legend, a Greek army besieged and destroyed Troy because a Trojan prince had kidnapped Helen, the beautiful wife of a Greek king. For many years, historians thought the legendary stories told of the Trojan War were totally fictional. However, excavations conducted in northwestern Turkey during the 1870s by a German archaeologist named Heinrich Schliemann suggested that the stories of the Trojan War might have been based on real cities, real people, and even real events. Further archaeological studies conducted in the 20th century support Schliemann's findings. Although the exact nature of the Trojan War remains unclear, this attack on Troy was almost certainly one of the last Mycenaean battle campaigns.